And we're live, broadcasting from Founders Park in historic Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Jersey, We are Music Matters with Jason Tram. Thank you so much for joining us for our unique podcast community, where we explore, where we explore the triumphs and challenges of the performing arts world as seen through the eyes of distinguished artists. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're delighted that we've been growing steadily, so please help us grow by hit the subscribe button on YouTube and all of our social media platforms. And we like it when our audience shares and likes our videos. It really makes a difference. Uh, if you, uh, we love it when you also when you join in the conversation by joining in on the chat, and um, it makes the conversation more interesting. We have a wonderful guest today. We have a singer-songwriter, uh, originally from Australia, but now living in Germany, uh, Rod Fritz, who has been performing and writing for over 20 years. He's released multiple albums. He's toured all over the world. We're delighted he can join us. Welcome, Rod. Hi, Jason. Thanks so much for having me on, on the show. It's, it's great to be here. It's always great to meet new colleagues. I've really enjoyed listening to your music. Uh, did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Uh, not really. And, and in fact, I started pretty late. Um, I started in my, well, I guess, yeah, my early 20s. Um, and in actual fact, I was unemployed at the time and I, I hooked up with a band and they needed a roadie. And um, yeah, kind of went to some live shows. And this one night I saw a guy playing saxophone. And I thought to myself, that's what I want to do. Wow. Just that lasted a few years. And, and then, yeah, I started in the singer songwriting game. So was it what, your first instrument the guitar, or was it saxophone, or what? what saxophone. Oh, it's actually the saxophone. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. And when did you start writing songs? How did how did that grow out of that? Did it was something you always just did naturally? Did the poetry come first, or the chords come first? How did you get into that part of the process? Oh, I guess I, I went through a pretty bad stage in my mid twenties. Uh, I, I suffered a, a pretty serious bout of depression, and. Um, at that time, I sort of I, I quit the band as well, um, and essentially I just picked up the guitar and, and started writing down my feelings. Uh, and the first album that came out of it was was uh, an album called Clouded, a pretty depressing album, pretty intense sort of album, um, but it helped me to get through it. Uh, Isn't it amazing how adversity is sometimes the, the, the creates or helps create some of the most incredible music? And, um, you know, that's been that way forever. Look at Beethoven, look at any of the greats. And uh, there wouldn't be a great, the Beethoven we love today wouldn't exist without what he went through. So I think that's always been a way that humans process and come to terms with their emotions. And I, I just find that incredibly poetic. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of just the way I, I seem to deal, deal with it. Um, later on in life, I, I changed my attitude. I thought if music could help me, then then uh, perhaps it could help others. And I turned my, I guess, my songwriting around into a more positive outlook. Um, so rather than focusing on all the negative stuff and, and essentially focusing on myself, I started putting it out there that, hey, you know, things really aren't that bad and, and we can get through a lot of, lot of stuff especially during hard times and that sort of thing. So, so it was a re it's a real focus of mine to, to put out positive um, material. Obviously, there's still one or two that slip through the gaps. You know? Something about the singer-songwriter, really, you know, we, we have to process some of the challenges we all face. I think that's a great way. We always listen for, like, you know, the, the direct connection to emotion with singer-songwriters. Was, was expressing yourself in music something that just came naturally to you as a performer? I guess you could say it came naturally. I, I, I certainly never really, uh, I didn't really put much of an effort into it, if, if that makes any sense. It, it kind of just, the songs just come out. Um, it's, it's, it, it's a varied process. Some songs will write themselves, which I usually find are the best ones. Other ones sit on the shelf for six months and then something will, will pop in with, into my head. Um, so I guess, yeah, you could say it was a pretty natural process. It, was, it, was, it just felt like the right thing to do at the time. It's great how that uh, how that evolves and the songs come to us. I've had so I've had a bunch of singer songwriters, and I'm always interesting about the process. Do you find the words come first, or the music, the melodies come first? What's your process to put these songs together? Is it uh, does it change for each song, or is it consistent, or how do you, how do you approach songwriting? Each song is it's really it's it's an an individual process. So so I couldn't tell you which one comes first, whether it's the lyrics or the melody. Um, or whether I'm just tinking around on, on the guitar and I find, geez, I like that, you know. Um, so it really is just 
just a, a, a random event, something will pop into my head and I'll, I'll, I'll just go with that. Um, some of the newer stuff I've been working on has been a lot of fun because I'll actually go into the studio unprepared, which is really unusual for me. Interesting, I've been, yeah. I've trained all my life to go in fully prepared and have everything 100% down. But it's been a little bit of an interesting time working with a, with a producer called um, Rafa St. Anna. Um, so we've done two tracks now, totally unprepared. He'll play something on guitar and I'll go, geez, I like that. And um, essentially we build a song out of that. And while he's working on the music, I'm, I'm writing the lyrics. Um, that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, what a wild process. Otherwise. I really like that. That's interesting because it keeps it fresh yeah. and modern, really fresh and kind of spontaneous. That's really, uh, that's got to, what, what two songs were those? We'll, we'll take a look at those. Uh, that's the, the latest release, which is um, Take the World With Me. And the other one is called Something to Give. Fantastic. We'll check those out yeah. because it's always interesting to see how we evolve like that. Uh, there's lots of stories of like the Rolling Stones used to go to the studio and just kind of unprepared. Also, they would just kind of just do their thing and uh, it would take a f an amazing amount of time. And the, 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 the rumor was that the Eagles, when they came in, they said, absolutely not. You must be 100% prepared and professional because yeah. <laughs> they were tired yeah. of dealing with the, the late deadlines and all the challenges. But look at the Rolling Stones catalog. You might, it's hard to argue with the results. <laughs> It's definitely hard, you know. Uh, for me, it's a lot of fun. Uh, as a solo artist, you know, I, I really do rely on myself insofar as, you know, I've got to write all the lyrics, come up with the chords, come up with the melody. Um, so having someone, I guess, having a collaboration of another artist who who is also making music and, and saying, hey, how about we add this and this? Um, let's do this as a bridge, for instance. Um, it, it really makes it an exciting, exciting process. Uh, yeah, the, the art of collaboration, it's not just two people working together. It's like the synthesis can result in some wild like you know, things you never thought of, and both of you would come up with different directions. Is it hard to find songwriting partners? Have you found uh, that to be a challenge, to find people to collaborate with? It certainly can be. Um, I think I think to find someone that you're willing to songwrite, or it's not willing to songwrite, it's, 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 it's essentially just gelling together. And I think it's really like any musicians. You know, you go to a jam night, and some nights can be really difficult because you're just not really gelling with that with that with that person. Or and other nights can be brilliant. Um, so I think it really is a matter of finding the right person that you're willing to to to, to work with, and that it, it it just gels together. It's a special kind of alchemy when it just works. Uh, I, was, yeah. I was saying in the pre-show before uh, I had my first live orchestra concert yesterday and we had 45 musicians come together and I've worked with almost all of them in the past, but it's been almost two years. And um, it's amazing how like once we started the, the rehearsal, things were a little rough. But as we started going through the different, we were doing all movie scores. So like John Williams, E.T. and Star Wars and all this great music. And uh, wow. you know, the third song, it all started coming together. The horns were listening to the strings. You know, the sound per it was outdoor performance so the sound guy was listening to the overall mix it's kind of like i think we're all feeling our way through it because covid was such a challenge for all of us as performing artists it's crazy how um how that's shaped our world as artists isn't it absolutely absolutely um i mean aside from the fact that that all of a sudden all, all gigs just stopped um i, I guess also it, it's also had a positive there's also a positive aspect to the COVID scenario, uh, insofar as, as myself, I've, I've concentrated a little bit of online promotion, especially in the regard to, to Spotify and that sort of thing. Um, at the end of COVID, I'll be I'll be releasing or I'll have enough tracks for for a new album. Um, so, so whilst I guess income has been difficult, I'm a live musician, so so I make an I make a living from playing uh, shows. Um, but having said that, th there's a few positives that have come out of it as well. I think we've all learned we've been home more than we've ever been in our entire lives. I mean, I've never been home this much myself, and uh, I usually do a lot of travel and a lot of performances and abroad, and uh, I've learned yep. to really do so much from my computer screen. It's pretty incredible. I think we've all <laughs> increased our digital footprint, learned new skills. Um, what's something you learned about yourself during this period? Uh I think I quite enjoy staying at home. I think. <laughs> Look, I, I think I've just learned that that uh, you, you need to be a little bit patient. 
need to have a little bit of understanding. At, at first, I was I was pretty upset with this with the situation, but then I I thought to myself, you know, well, let's say you know I was at a gig and and I'm spreading the disease, or or I contracted it or whatever, and then I took it home to my aunts and uncles or whatever. I, I, it's just not a risk that that. Uh, that, that I think anyone should should be willing to go through. So whilst I don't necessarily agree with the way it's been handled and, and everything, it is the way it is and and you know, I think for the safety of everyone you, you've just gotta you've just gotta do it. Yeah, we all have to kind of feel our way through. It's really strange. Having so many artists from different countries, it's been really eye-opening to me how the different countries have been dealing with it. And, um, you know, even within the states where I live, every state's been kind of different. We've, it's been a wild kind of hodgepodge reaction. And, uh, and music has borne the brunt of a lot of it, I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, I know Germany's been pretty tightly locked down. Have they started lo loosening the restrictions? Everything's pretty well open at the moment. Okay. So it's, it's still it's still mask wearing and that sort of thing. Um, there's a there's a lot of places where you need to do a test, a, a COVID test prior to entry. Um, vaccinations are, are, are moving along quite nicely. Well, it's um, good to hear it's all positive so direction. When we want to hear our it, colleagues it a, return yep. back to the stage, has live performances started in your neck of the woods? I've just had my first two live performances over the last few weeks. That's great uh, news. Yeah, fantastic. I'm really, really happy about it. Um, and uh, it looks like there's a, there's a few more bookings coming in. Um, so, so I've got my next one coming up in, a, in another week and a half. So, so I'm so looking forward to that What was it like well. to retake the stage after a, such a long layover? And uh, were you rusty at all? A little. Funnily enough, I haven't been doing a great deal of rehearsal at home. Um, I've been a little bit lazy. Uh, I guess I've done so many shows in the past that it really is the old saying of, you know, once you learn how to ride a bike, it's kind of, yeah. Um, I, gotta be honest, I have my first absolutely. rehearsal in June and, uh, you know, I've been doing Zoom. I, I teach at a university and I, I do lots of different rehearsals, but I did all of them via Zoom. I was doing like four Zoom, five Zoom rehearsals a week all year. But then to get in front of real people again, I was like, I was super nervous. I couldn't believe it. It was a strange thing. And I've been, I told the choir, I'm like, I've probably done 7,000 rehearsals in my career. And uh, this one yeah. has actually made me yeah. nervous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just so happy to be back on stage and, and really I don't get nervous anymore, uh, or, or it, it really just flows uh, quite quite naturally. Um, yeah, just re just really happy to be back on stage. Happy to be singing. Um, for me, I don't know. I just love playing music. I, I love singing. You know, it's definitely not about the money or anything like that. It's We've just, all learned that this year, I believe. Something I love doing it. Yeah, I had yeah. that conversation this summer. Like, you don't become a musician to, for the for the money, right? These days, especially these days, and uh, you have to really yeah. love it. And I think we've all become philosophers during this COVID period. Speaking to all the different artists, how we've all had to really think about why we do this. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I had my doubts as well. So that the hardest thing for me. With the last few, with the, with actually the first gig, was to get the motivation to actually do it. I, I sat at home going, you know, I'm not sure if I can actually be bothered to to, to take this challenge on again. Um, I, I'm obviously glad I did, and as soon as I got there, I'm, I'm feeling wonderful and great. So um, it, it's a it's a funny thing. It's it's almost like you learn you forgot how good it was. Um, and, and how much fun it actually is to be performing in front of people. We figure um, how much the audience really needs it. I mean, they really need it just as much as we do. I mean, there's nothing wrong. We all, we, thank gosh, we had, thank God we had the Zoom. Thank God we had Spotify and the streaming services and Netflix. But in the end of the day, it's really not the same as direct human communication and direction. It's not the same at all. Uh, I got offered to do a, a few, um, a few live computer um shows but I, I just couldn't get into it I, it was just something that that was really really i guess difficult to get the mindset around to, to to actually doing a live stream um i think i posted one or two videos on facebook or something like that but but it just it's it's not me I, I'm, I'm i'm i need to be on a stage i need that my guitar in my hand and and um 
Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone's so different with their reaction to things. That's what makes this all so interesting. We I've had some bands on here who are doing four shows a week, doing live stream things, and you know, incredible amounts of online stuff. And I've had other ones who've done almost nothing. They've kind of retreated inward. They've been studying. They've been learning new languages. They've been kind of doing different things. It's just so interesting to see the uh, the range of reactions that our colleagues have had in this time and. Uh, yeah, not everyone is built to be on the Zoom screen. It's it's certainly not the same experience. What was the audience like? What did it feel like to be in front of the audience? Was the audience really re receptive? For these last shows? Sure. Yeah, they loved it. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're very responsive. Um, I think they're just as excited to be to be listening to live music again as well. So, I had a standing ovation last night, and people were really just like they were so appreciative. It's always nice. Like, I'm like I was nervous, not so much nervous. I was, it was just you know doing the show and get in front of people again, then to talk to them afterwards that they like, boy, we needed this. We haven't heard live music in so long. I think some musicians are just built for that. Some musicians are just designed to be out there in front of people, and and that's all there is to it. Like I said, I can't really do it in front of a computer screen. Um, or I don't have the motivation to do it in front of a computer screen, but, but get me out in front of a few people. It's just, it, for me, it's just a wonderful experience. Um, and, it, and it drives me, drives me to do more. So yeah. what percentage of, back before COVID, what percentage was spent writing music and rehearsing? And what percentage was spent in performance? Like, was it 50-50 for you? Um, no, not really. So, so I guess it was 80% was, was the performance side. Uh, honestly, being being a solo musician and managing myself, um, you know, a I'm my own booking agent, I'm my own travel agent, uh, social media director. booker, so, <laughs> you know. So the actual music and the live performance is around about ten percent. The ninety percent is is all the other work that 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 uh, goes in behind it. Um, I, I call this the era of the indie artists. There's so many fine indie artists, and they're doing such great work. I mean, you think um, it would be almost impossible to do this 10, 15 years ago, how um, we have um, such an incredible possibility to reach a large audience and to get our music out there in platforms that, are, you know, before we need the record labels to do that for you, but there is such a way to get out there using Spotify, YouTube, all these streaming services. It's pretty incredible. It, it's it's a two-way street. It's it's a two-way street. Um, I do find with with the online stuff that uh, that the, that the live or the the audience you lose a little bit of that live audience feel. People are pretty spoiled with music and with the with the amount of music. Um, that, you know, it's actually quite quite a big discussion. Um, but having said that, having the online ability, having being able to reach my fans all over the world. Um, is, is a wonderful thing. It's, What's it's it like to write thing. songs, put your songs on there, and get recept, re you know, get response from people in countries all over the planet? What's it like to get those kind of reactions from people? It's a, it's a really great feeling. It's 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 a fantastic feeling knowing that there's people all over the world that, that are listening to your, your music, getting into it. Um, I recently just yeah just just clocked over a million listens on Spotify. Um, wow, which is, which is it's it's not a bad for an independent artist it's it's it's, it's a nice little achievement um having said that there's always this drive to want more for some reason there's there's you, you know i guess it's just the way the way humans are designed um which is kind of funny because when i'm playing live i don't care if i'm playing in front of five people or 50 people or 500 people it doesn't matter you know i'm just as happy to be playing live um, do you find that people like discover your music and then they'll go see you play live? Yeah, yeah. Just about every gig, there's there's someone there that that will go, oh, do you, I checked you out and I wanted to come and see you. Um, absolutely. So from that point of view, the online, the social media and everything is is it, it does work. It, it, you know, absolutely. 
you know, for all the, the, the positives, there's, you know, certainly yeah, they don't they don't fairly monetize Spotify and the streaming services for musicians. It's really quite quite a challenge. So, I know that's a conversation I have with a lot of artists that that, that could be a real challenge. The uh, to make a living, you really have to be performing. You can't uh, retire or you know sit back with, with the but. It's, um, but it is a tool to get out there and get heard by people and to get your to build your fan base and to, to grow absolutely absolutely uh i'm not i'm not sure what the figures are i think a million spotify view listens is worth about four thousand dollars um <laughs> you know wow but you, you'd need to get a million spotify listens now if you had that every month then you could go hey you know i'm actually doing all right um, maybe the rolling stones in the real world mentioning them but uh, yeah. they're doing okay yeah. <laughs> In, in the real world, it really is. It's, it's about performing live. Um, it's, it's really about booking the gigs, traveling to the gigs. Uh, a, a lot of people, I guess, don't realize the amount of work that's involved in doing a show, the amount of qu- equipment that you need, um, the number of emails that you've sent. Uh, funnily enough, my latest release uh, a month ago was a, a song called Independent Musician. Oh. which pretty much goes into detail about being an independent musician. I'm, I'm a very honest songwriter, so if I, if I feel something or, or, you know, I'm a storyteller, I guess, and, and the stories that I tell are from the surroundings around me. So, so I decided to write a, a song called Independent Musician. I love that. It's, um, you know, music's always like an amber that captures its time and its place, right? And uh, <laughs> as a story- songwriter, you are, you are capturing that you know, for all time, just kind of solidifying that uh, that emotion and that story. And it's a, I just think it's yeah. a beautiful thing. That's what artists have been doing for since time immemorial. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it really is about creating the art. So, so each song for me is, is an art piece. It's um, it's something that I love to do. And and um, yeah, yeah. Who are some of your musical inspirations as you were putting as you were growing into your your career? Who are some of the people who inspired you? I guess I mean I grew up through the through the nineties. I, I if I if I look at some of the covers that that I like to do, and I don't do I don't do a great deal of covers, but I guess there's a little bit of Bob Dylan in there. There's a little bit of Cat Stevens. Um, so kind of that 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 folky. Um, you know, I mean, I, I do you too, and and I'll do an Elvis cover as well. So, um, but but more that folk country type of feel. Um, these days, I'm I'm trying to. Well, I'm not trying. These days, I'm sort of more directing in the pop direction, um, which I'm enjoying right now as well. So. Now you started your career in a in a rock band. Have you done any band playing recently, or are you still you sticking just most uh, solo act? Not recently. Um, I've had a couple of bands um, in Australia. I did a lot of touring with a band that, that we actually called Fritz, um, which was uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, uh, in Germany, I put together another band, uh, which is funny enough called Fritz Band. Okay, <laughs> it's my surname, but but okay. Um, Bands are great. It's a lot of fun. You know, I guess, I guess all of a sudden you're in a situation where you're relying on other people. So, the drummer's kid's sick today, and I can't come to rehearsal. Um, I, I mean, I think you'd probably know more about that with with working with forty five musicians at a dance. Oh, well, you need to, I also book the shows I'm, I'm too. About three other four. I book the yeah, shows and uh, you know, yeah. someone's stuck in traffic and this one's yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that very yeah. much. So <laughs> Yes. Um, so I guess as a solo artist the, the responsibility falls on me. So I turn up on time, I, I rehearse when I can. Uh, and 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 it and it, it works. Um, yeah. But, well, it's but certainly been band... working for you, and you've built a, a wonderful career around it. And um, and um, so, do you ever record with other people in the studio, or do you on your albums? Have you collaborated with other musicians on your indie projects? Absolutely. So this latest one, I'm really just working with with one producer, um, who's multi multi instrumental talent. So so the the two of us complete the entire the entire process. Um, in the past, I've recorded with session musicians, uh, which seems to work great too. Um, also, done done a couple of albums with bands, um, and that sort of thing. So it's it's a varied process. 
I, I wouldn't say I go out and look for these things. They kind of just come to me. So, so same thing with working on this album with this producer. Uh, it was a it was a friend of a friend who came to me and said, "Hey, I've got a little bit of a home recording studio and I produce a little bit of music." And he said, "Do you want to come up to my place and and we'll, we'll do something?" Me being me, I'm thinking, "Oh, who's this guy?" You know, <laughs> I don't have time for this. But um, I, I I bit the bullet and and decided to go and see him, and and it just worked out. It worked out really really well. So Those that's the way we really did pay album. off in the in the new ideas and uh, recharge yep. the batteries artistically. And um, yeah, what do you do when um, you maybe hit a writer's block? You ever hit a writer's block in your writing, or are you a consistent? Absolutely. Writer? No, no, I, I've hit plenty of writer's blocks. In actual fact, the worst one I had was after I, I, I actually decided to go to the university to study music. Um, and uh, after that period of time, I had a really bad writer's block. It's like, it's like everything just came naturally to start off with. And then when I sat down to write a song, I was thinking, well, should I play a G-sharp here or a G7? You know, I started to overanalyze the, the songwriting process, um, and and hence for for yeah for for about three years I didn't I didn't write any music at all. Wow, that's a long drought. Three yeah. years. Ooh. Yeah, three. It was a long time. It was a long time. And then all of a sudden, bang! You know, there, there's a, there's an album within within six months that just popped up. Maybe so. sometimes it just takes that time for it to gel. Um, were you studying? Um, were you studying an instrument? Were you studying composition? What was the uh, the focus of your studies? It was it was actually songwriting. So oh, it you're was a course degree of, in songwriting. Wow. Okay. Great. It was yeah yeah. Um, it was a, a fairly new course that, that that the University of Tasmania was offering. Um, and and I decided to, to, to take advantage of it and, and do a do a songwriting study uh, songwriting course. I find that whenever yeah. I've learned something like uh, new sets of concepts, it takes a long time for that to gel, to kind of meld with what we do naturally. We kind of have to incorporate that into our kind of uh, into into who we are, and it takes time. That that does take time for the kind of uh, the the you know you have to take that material, internalize, it, and then it has to become organic, and that that does take time. Yeah, absolutely. I um funnily enough, I, I've been doing a couple of guitar lessons, as in as in teaching. I'm not a guitar teacher, but but. Just, just to some children, and it's been a really interesting process insofar as, um, you know, once again a, a G chord. Until these kids, they, you know, and then after X amount of weeks, all of a sudden their fingers just start naturally hitting that G chord. You know, there's no more looking at the hands and no more maneuvering each individual finger. In each individual finger, it just it just happens. Um, same with rhythm. You know, you try and teach these kids rhythm. And then all of a sudden, bang! One day, they don't have it, and the next day, it's it's there. So it's it's a really exciting process that, as well. And it's funny enough, it's teaching me um, certain aspects of music as well. <laughs> well, you have a little one at home. That, you know, I have four children. Uh, that teaches you patience quite a bit, and uh, watch them grow as musicians and artists has been an incredible blessing to me, and, and as people, of course. But yeah. uh, to watch uh, my, my youngest son is a, a drummer and he's at Berkeley School right now studying jazz and uh, fusion rock and uh, you know he's gonna come out of there and uh, I look forward to seeing you know after being around, being around so many really great musicians seeing what, what he goes through and what he comes away with because uh, it's fascinating yeah. to watch them grow as artists. Absolutely, I, I guess I didn't have that chance when I was younger. I, I missed out on that on that 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 aspect when I was younger. Uh, it certainly would have been. It, it, it would have been good to have that background in music. Everyone as, has such a unique a path, person. right? Everyone has such a unique path. I've had artisans who, who've come from so many different ways. And the one thing I've learned is there's no one path, right? Everyone's got their yellow brick road that we follow. Everyone learns their kind of, you know, finds their way. And um, and some that have this and some have this. And they all come at it a different way. And we all have a unique perspective, which really makes it interesting and so, so personal. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, yeah, I, I can't pick. The, I can't pick which road that that it, that um, that I've been traveling down. For instance, it's 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 it's. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a pretty easygoing person. These things just seem to come to me. So, so, yeah, yeah. Hard work, determination. It does pay off. So, absolutely. um 
What do you see as the next chapter in um, in your music? What are something you what are some goals you have as you uh, get back in the po- hopefully the post COVID chapter? What's that going to look like for Rod Fritz? It'll definitely be getting into back into more gigs. Um, I'm not planning a great deal this year, so so this year will be the the release of the album. Um, next year I'll be planning on to do uh, more gigs in Europe, Germany, Europe, Switzerland. I would love to get back to the States. Um, I've, I've been to the US three times now and uh, it's been really successful, played some great shows in in um, Hollywood or in, in California and, and New York, actually all over. I, I bought myself a Mustang in 2014 wow. yeah, funny enough, you know, and drove around the US for three months. It was a wonderful experience. It was really American really sports car and you know, travel the whole country. That's a great, uh, you know, a great way to experience music. the country. Yeah. It, it was fantastic. It really was. Made some great friends, um, great connections. It's just a shame that it's been so long since I've been back. So I essentially do a little bit more touring. Um, I've just had a son. So that's really... Congratulations. That's a magnum Thank opus you. there. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a funny time in my life. It's actually the perfect time. I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a little bit older. Um, but, for, you know, for me, I've, I've done all my partying. I've traveled. I've seen a lot of different things. I've, I'm very content with where I am at right now. So it's the perfect time to, to, to really to, to focus on something else, um, you know, um, teach him a little bit of music as well <laughs> or, to, or, or encourage him. Um, Sing some beautiful lullabies. Yeah, you know, that's on the cards next as well. So there's a lot of money. As in you're becoming videos. a dad, <laughs> have it manifested itself in your songwriting? Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah. Um, Take the World With Me, which was the second latest release, was essentially about, about the birth of my son. So it was written, I, I think I wrote it six months ago, five months ago or thereabouts. Um, we put it together, produced it. And essentially, it's it's a take the world with me as a story about about my son and I embarking on this new journey. So, and it's funny this songwriting game. It's you know every day there's something new that pops up, a, a new little adventure or a new idea or, you know, I, I'd love to have a little bit more of a plan on on how, on the future and on how things go. But but it really is it's a it's a tumbleweed blowing in the wind. I guess. Um, yeah. Such is the creative and artistic process, isn't it? Is that kind of uh, is uh, the inspiration comes at the strangest times. Beethoven in all his sketchbooks talks about like yeah, having a notebook next to his bed, waking up and jotting down a theme that he would deal with later on. And you know, I think that just comes when we least expect it. That inspiration, I think, that's what the mystery of being a creative artist is that it's always there, but you have to pluck it out of the universe, right? Absolutely, absolutely. These days we have a little voice recorder next to the bed. <laughs> I bet Beethoven wishes he had that as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, geez. Imagine what he would have come up with. with voice with notes that. and all that yep. amazing technology we have. Are you uh, really yep. into technology and your music? Are you uh, a technophile? Is that uh, something? Do you also do your own, like, do you, do, you do, your, do you have a home studio? Do you do a lot of your editing at home? Uh, no. I'm not a techno head. Uh, for me, it's still a matter of grabbing the guitar and, and going around a campfire and singing songs. That's that's the number one. Yeah, I, I'm honestly, I'm I'm happiest exactly in that situation, standing around a campfire and and singing some songs. Um, technology is not my forte. I do a little bit of solo recording at home uh, if I have an idea or whatnot, or I want to send some send something to my producer. Um, I'll record it, but but that's about the extent of technology. Um, yeah, some so direct very, human interaction, very ready. That makes sense that you're 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 so at home on the stage because you you're just uh, where you're most comfortable. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. What's something you, that you hope your audiences take away when you perform? I hope that people. Um, really get a, a, a positive um, outlook after a show. Um, and I've had almost every show someone comes up and says, hey, man, you know, you really touched me with this song and, and I feel a lot better about, 
about stuff. Um, for me, if I get one person that comes to me after a show and says that I'm I'm ecstatic, that's 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 mission mission accomplished. Um, so essentially, I, I want people to, to feel good. I want people to really think, okay, it's not that bad. You know, we can get through anything. Um, yeah, yeah. Music certainly has that ability to heal hearts and to uh, to change minds and to change our, our emotions. Certainly, it's always been the way music's been. And um, we need more and more positivity these days. There's so much negativity on the news and with, in our world that... Um, Boy, the artists, uh, you know, have such a big responsibility to uh, to move people. Absolutely, absolutely. And unfortunately, there's negativity everywhere. Um, um, and I guess on that note, music, you know, music saved me. Music helped me. It saved me in a lot of different ways. And and I just feel like now I've got the ability to actually give something back. Um, so so, and that's and that's really. Quite a quite a large aim, a personal aim of mine, is to be able to give something a little bit back. You know, obviously, you know, I, I wrote a song a few years ago about, about about climate change. The independent musician song, for example, isn't a positive song, um, but but I do focus a lot a lot of my energy on on, on writing positive material. We can't be positive all the time, and certainly, um, right. you know, put in a minor key and find a really great topic. We all uh, there's so many different facets of music making and uh, of our personalities, but it's um, it's a beautiful thing to focus on finding that positive message. And uh, I think we all need it, especially this past year. We all need uh, those those moments to sit and just listen to some beauty. Absolutely, absolutely. Like like I said, it's, it's unfortunately there's a lot of negativity around, so. So, and I'm happy to be, be, you know, combating that. I guess it's my little personal war. Is, is, yeah, light is, in know, the darkness. We appreciate that. Yeah. So now we're gonna we're gonna play a song as we finish up this interview. How can people find out more about you and listen to your music? All right. Uh, uh, essentially, you know, Google's the best way. So you just Google Rod Fritz, and um, and it will it will come up. I think there's one other guy in Boston who used to be a radio presenter. <laughs> so if you see him, you found the wrong one. We don't want to um, hear him sing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just just Google Rod Fritz. Um, pretty much. Yeah, obviously. And you can hear you can hear you on all the streaming platforms, Spotify and YouTube, YouTube. as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm a bit of a fan of Reverb Nation and and. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So, yeah, and what song are we going to hear as we as we play off the as we play off today? So this is a little song called "Stay with Me," um, and it's essentially it's about you know hanging once again it's about hanging in there during tough times, um, you know, and and essentially you know, "Stay with Me" is 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 is, is ultimately about that about um, hanging in there. So. Well, so, so we can all relate to that during these tough times. And um, yeah. thank you so much, Rod Fritz, for joining us today. And congratulations on the birth of your son. And we look forward to hearing what the next chapter will look like for you. Fantastic. It's been such a pleasure, Jason. Thanks for your time. And, um, yeah. yeah. All the best. I can't wait to catch one of your shows when you come back to the, uh, to the U.S. Definitely. I will definitely hit you up. <laughs> Continued success, my friend. Thanks a lot, Jason. Thank you for Thanks joining us on Music Matters with Jason Tram. Please remember to subscribe to us on YouTube and smash that bell icon for the most up-to-date information on our upcoming guests and topics. Check us out on Twitter, on Instagram, on you name it, we'll be there. Thank you so much, and remember, keep music alive.
Have you ever been left out in the rain? Walking the same old lonely road once again. Have you ever been left out in the rain? Walking the same old lonely road once again. If your heart's ever been betrayed, a never ending winter setting in. I believe if we're honest, I think you understand. We can be modest and I'll hold your hand. I believe if we're stronger, we can make it through. We've got the answers, so stay with me. Stay with me. It's such a long way to get back home. Have you ever felt this way before? Your confidence is left lying on the floor. I believe if we're honest, I think you understand. We can be modest and I'll hold your hand. I believe if we're stronger. So stay with me. Ha, 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 ha. 